All right, so we are backstage at the Xfinity Center, yes. and normally when I get a chance to talk to you, it's before the show, but now you just got off stage. How are you feeling? I'm tired as, you know what? You can say oh, it's God. okay. I'm tired as right now. <laughs> no, it takes a lot out of me. It's so much energy and so many people and feeding off everything that's going on out there. It's really, it's when I get done, I'm, I come off stage and I got an hour of, first I had to take a shower, eat, and then I do another whole hour like warming down and then I got to get my body worked on. It's a whole huge thing. It's a lot different than when we first met, when you guys first broke at WAF. Like you were talking tonight on stage about how October is your 25th anniversary as a band. It is 25 years. Yeah, a lot of things back then, we, we were going out playing 25 minutes in front of all these other people and it's nothing compared to what now you got to go through. Plus, we, like I said, we're little kids, we're only 24 years old. It's easy when you're that age. Not saying that we're old and done, but it's just it gets a little harder. Well, the shows are bigger, the crowds are bigger. What does it mean to you after all of these years to look out and see the crowds just as big? Was this anything that you could have anticipated? I mean, you never know. You never can anticipate something like that. But it feels amazing. It feels good to be able to touch so many people in a way that they still continue to come see the shows and. And, and really feel something and get some kind of emotional relief out of whatever is going on in their lives. And the band brings that escape. I like that. What about looking out and seeing the multi-generations of fans now? Because now you've got corn fans with kids. And <laughs> it's just like it's three generations deep, sometimes four. It's crazy. Um, like two decades, two and a half decades. It's pretty crazy. And there's still like young kids coming. Um, the original kids are now got, you know, their parents now, they're bringing their kids, and then just other kids, just they're just discovering us for the first time, so it's, it's pretty insane. You talk about kids, Monkey had to pull off the tour because he's anxiously awaiting a new baby. Any word? Yeah, yeah, he had her. Um, she's beautiful. He's so happy. I'm so happy for him. And, uh, yeah, she's rad. He had a little baby girl, so I'm really happy for him. So he's spending time with her, and he's going to be back soon, and we'll keep going. I watched the documentary, which you brought some amazing uh, comic relief with your parts of the documentary. Oh, his documentary? Yeah. Yeah, that's his. It's not a corn one, um, but that was like his story. And uh, yeah, man, I don't, I don't bind to that bullshit. So, <laughs> no, it don't even try to be do that to me because you almost shut your ass down in two seconds. The movie it was so heavy, and then your interview parts were just they brought such humor when it needed to be there. Well, it's if you look at it, it's pretty funny how they believe and how they act. It's ridiculous. So, um, I think he agrees a lot with me what I'm saying. Um, it wasn't to be mean; it's just real and it's true. Um, and you know, I respect anyone's beliefs, but when it's like radical, like some of those people, I just, I just don't like that. And uh, the whole way everything happened, I mean, it was just, I was just being real, and everybody liked that. But it's got to look really good when you look across that stage, though, and you see him there. Yeah, I had no problem with it. It's just the religion in general. I had no problem. I'm glad that something could get him out of his dark hole and dark place. So I totally respect that. And if people need that, fine. Just don't throw your views on me. That's the only problem I have. Don't push what you believe on me. I'm not doing it to you. <laughs> so get the f back. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of bands that have gone through a lot mm -hmm. and they come out the other side of things and it just seems to be this whole generation of bands now. And when you look side to side with everything that you've gone through, with everything that all of the other guys in the band have gone through, talk to me about what it means to have your brothers there and that you guys have all gone through everything together. I mean, it's amazing. You look, I mean, I've been with these guys 25 years. I'm used to seeing them there. They're, I spend more time with them than I do my whole family, um, usually. So it, it means it's something special that we got this camaraderie together and we, we enjoy each other's company. It's, it's funny. Um, it's nice to take a break sometimes, which we do take breaks, and but it's still fun that we can get excited about creating music together still after all these years. Well, the crowd really responded to the new single. Yeah. So the album's not out until next month. Can you give me a little bit more information about what's in there? And it's just a really dark, incredible record. So it's like two bookends I mean, from like the first Corn record and this one are like our darkest records. So. Um, I don't know which more I can tell you about it. It's just you have to listen to it. You have to experience it. It is an experience. 
I've been asking a lot of the bands because you were talking about after 25 years, it takes a lot out of you. And I, I, I've been asking a lot of the singers, what are you doing to protect your voice? Because you still sound like you did all those crazy notes, all that stuff that's on all your old records, you're still pulling off. So what are you doing with your voice? I mean, I warm up, I warm down. I've been sober since 1998. I'm just coming up a couple of days. It'll be 21 years. Wow. So that has a lot to do with it and just taking care of my voice and this is why i do you know interviews after and i don't do that many interviews because i gotta save my voice i know and i and i appreciate it that you it's the worst thing you can do (laughs) really um and it's hard you know managers they don't get it and they try to book all this stuff and i just tell everyone just leave me the alone please i'm trying to for me it's all about going out there in the performance i really don't care about the other stuff but if People like yourselves will work with me on my, my schedule after this. Perfect, because I warm down. I'm cool. My voice is still good. Let's do it. Well, I asked. I said, can I sit down with Jonathan? They said, will you wait? And I was like, F- yeah, I'm waiting, of course. They're dipsh- it's like, come on. It's just rock and roll with the f- It doesn't have to be at four. And f- Sometimes I'd be like 10 in the morning. I'm not even, I'm asleep then. I don't get up till four. In the afternoon? Yeah, I'm a straight vampire, babe. I'm, I've <laughs> always been that way. I sleep all can, the entire day and I wake up and my morning is playing a show and then I'm up all night me and my son Zeppi we don't crash out till like nine in the morning no that, that sounds fantastic it's amazing I like that I just don't like being around lots of people everyone's asleep and I'm just kicking it and that's where I write and I do all my stuff when I'm home beggar still in my studio I'm up all night doing that are you ordering weird stuff on the internet the infomercials or something are you up late night watching bad tv no, I'm usually just working on music or playing video games or working on my house. Um, I got all kinds of crazy weird stuff. Um, I don't know, you have to see it. Okay, can yeah. we come over? Yeah, anytime you want to come, come to Baker's I'll take you to my studio, freak you out. Um, yeah, that's just my the world I've created, and that's just how I roll. And sometimes it's hard when you got to do press and stuff because I'm at the point now, and it's not being conceited or cocky, but I'm just like, if you want to talk to me, this is my hours. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all good. Listen, we're fine. We'll come and hang out with you whenever you want to talk. I, I love you. And of course, just because you were one of the stations, the first station that ever played us, of course, I'm going to do whatever I can do. Um, but it's just, it's, that's just how I'm at right now. Well, you're talking about anniversaries and you're talking about how AF was one of the first stations that played you. Yeah. So I just had my 21st anniversary on the air. And next year is our 50th anniversary as a rock station. Wow. So, can you tell me a story from the beginning of the Corn WAF relationship? Like, do you remember the some? First time I went there, and it was, I was Cheryl Valentine took me, and I had my first interview there. And this, I just remember the radio station, small little radio station, but it, that's the station. And we rolled up there, and I did my first interview there. I'll never forget that. I love Cheryl. She took me on my first plane ride. I remember playing a show with Ozzy or something, and we had to fly from LA to Phoenix for a radio station there, and uh, that was my first plan. I did all kinds of stuff. It was fun. It was like Cheryl's one of those one of those badass rock and roll yeah, bitches. Yeah, 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 she is. So she took me, and we did our first interview there, and I've come back ever since. That's the first time you were on a plane was when you were on tour with Corn. Yeah, for some reason we were on a plane. We flew from, I don't even know where, I was Vegas to, to Phoenix to go to Cupid around there. The old KUPD. Yeah. That was my very first interview ever on air, other than like KNEC and that stuff back then. But um, yeah, that was that. And I remember um, WAF. I remember that one. I remember, oh, what other? That was pretty much it because all the other ones that we did back then are gone. It's because the rock stage. Well, that's about. that's uh, why. Yeah. Like after 50 years, we got an anniversary to. Better hit the gra- I'm glad we gotta throw it. a f- party, you man. Will you it. come? If we invite you, will you come? I will try my best. Yes. They got me going everywhere, but I got like two little boys I'm raising. It's hard sometimes, but um, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, we gotta throw some kind of a bash. 50 years is 50 years. That's, that's an amazing feat, definitely. I mean, I, my first memory of you guys, I wasn't even on the air yet, and I thought, okay, this radio thing is going to take off because they had all of the street teamers helping you guys with the show, mm-hmm. and I had the job with the air pump, and I got to blow up all the blow-up dolls that you guys used to hang from the truss. That was amazing. And I'm sitting there with the blow-up doll, and I'm like, shh, 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 and I'm like, oh, my God, I have made it. That was so good. I can't believe all the stations we did. I had that giant <laughs> over my head. <laughs> um, 
those were good times. Then after that, it was a whole bunch of dolls, candles. We had candle ticks. Um, all that was good times. Do you ever look back, especially in the heyday of like the MTV video era, and you just look back and go, I can't believe we spent so much fucking money. I enjoyed every penny spent. It was good. It, it sucks that it's not like that anymore, that MTV went away because it's made bands had the opportunity to, to get to that point, make things larger than life. Um, record labels had money to do extravagant things that made rock and roll look larger than life, and now that's all gone. People st still do it, and you have to have inventive ways, but it's it's not like it was back then. You can't tell from the production of the, of the show, though, because the show looks fantastic. Yeah, that, well, you spend money where you need to do that. I'm talking about, like, crazy shows when we did stuff, like album releases and all the crazy stuff we used to do back in the day. That's not, it seems like that's all gone, and uh, it sucks. MTV's gone. Um, I remember just, I'd watch that religiously. I love that station, and then, you know, reality TV took over, and that's it. You know what's funny is that some of the interns around the radio station now, when you talk about the shows, they're like, oh my God, you saw corn at Woodstock in 90. Was it as crazy as it looked on TV? And I have to say, uh, yeah, it was. It was amazing. The first day was killer. And then it all went to sh after the second day. But I think that's because people had enough. They had one full day of trying to pay 10 or 12 bucks for a water bottle. Yeah, when it was 90 fucking degrees. And they were just tired of getting over and you know obviously things happen so i have one more question for you before i let you go and then uh i know that you have late night infomercials or you know some kind of crazy vampire lifestyle to get to yeah. when you are up on stage and you're in the freak on the leash making those noises i have tried to make a thousand times over and you grab the mic and you scream go what does that feel like the energy coming back from the crowd because tonight they went insane no it's amazing <laughs> i mean you can't i don't know how to explain it um it's something that can't be explained in words it's just this energy this wave of just energy comes over and i'm going i'm not even in my body at that point i don't think um i'm somewhere else and i just i feel it on a different level it's it's better than anything in the world well, 25 years this October. Happy anniversary. Next year, I hope you're wishing us our 50th in person. We're throwing a f of a party, and it's not going to be a party without Jonathan Davis. Well, send me an invite. I will try my best. All right. Well, we appreciate all the support over the years. Obviously, corn has meant a ton to us. And you helped us from the beginning, so of course. All right. Well, there you go. Jonathan Davis, backstage at the Xfinity Center.